Many scholars today have rightly pointed out that the apocalypse as an inspired work that was addressed to the Christian people of its time. It ought to be studied in that light. Okay, so remember this part. It ought to be studied in that light. If the author reveals the future, it is not with the intention of revealing concrete events at some distant age, but rather to stimulate a trust in God. So if it sounds scary and it kind of makes you go, Ugh, and it makes you think, wow, I better depend on God because this could be some really nasty stuff, it's doing its purpose. That's the intent of it. So it's to stimulate your trust in God, a loyalty to Christ the King, confident confidence in the ultimate triumph of righteousness and patience under adversity and finally hope in the prospect of what could be a painful death you've got to maintain hope all things that were urgently needed by the Christians of Asia and things that will never be without meaning and importance as long as the world lasts so it was written for those people, but there are spiritual lessons to be learned at any time, any era, any people. And uh, we aren't really persecuted people here, so we don't have to put all this to work every day the way some people do that are being persecuted to this day. So the apocalypse addressed, addressed itself to a concrete situation, and that was the church suffering in tribulation and the permanent value of the apocalypse is that it offers insight into the church for the understanding of world history because when you really look at it you think gosh all this stuff that goes on under God you know this gives us a spiritual view the history of this world is the arena in which God works out the redemption all life comes within the embracing will of God. So we can rest assured of that. The history of the world demonstrates a continuous conflict between the will of God and the forces of evil. And this evil uses us poor little sheep, innocent little human instruments to accomplish its designs and purposes and make us not so innocent. But the evil itself is bigger it's huge it's of cosmic and universal scale so the will of God is to create a new heaven and a new earth in which the Saints will be vindicated and that means justified for any of you who don't know that word the final divine purpose will definitely be accomplished but it will be accomplished in God's time so as, as it says in Mark 13, 32 to 33, as to the exact day or hour, what is it? No, no one knows it. <laughs> Neither the angels in heaven nor even the Son, but only the Father. Be constantly on watch. Stay awake, folks. Is anyone sleeping in class? <laughs> Stay awake. <laughs> you do not know when the appointed time will come. So it could happen on the last day of class, or it could happen... 10 gazillion years from now, but whatever it is, it's going to be exciting, isn't it? <laughs> so, so there you go. We have, now you've gotten kind of the overall rundown. Um, next, we'll be moving on to uh, chapter 2, which is, now you'll really love this because it's dealing with, with uh, symbols and, and signs, and we'll be blasting off to the future. Symbols, signs, and sounds, and what to look for. So... There you go. Now, does anybody, now that I've completely uh, confused you with all these uh, theories, uh, uh, Sylvie wants to present a new one. <laughs> no, I was just trying to figure out, somebody, uh, one of the people you talked about was saying that uh, differentiating between the spirit and the soul. What's the difference? I thought spirit and soul are the same. Well, we all have souls, right? All of us have a soul. And the spirit of God, usually referring to the, the Holy Spirit, yeah, yeah. And so there's a whole bunch of stuff with the number sevens and all this that's, that ties to, in fact, I was reading last night in, um, oh boy, where was I? Isaiah? Where it lists the seven fruits of the Spirit. Seems like seven seems to be the number that's connected with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it's like a number of perfection or 
completion or what have you. And so the, the numerologist people just love to get in here and just pick this whole thing apart and, and figure out the stuff. And um, but why not? You're gonna. Yeah. Yeah, we're working up. It gets that's why it gets more interesting as it goes. So you know, get those credit credit cards and UPC codes ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. So uh, anybody else completely lost or excited or, or or what are you thinking? What do you feel about this book? It's it's yeah, confused. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got to remember too. It's it's speaking to these. This letter was kind of written like it's a. Uh, one big letter, but it's also individual letters addressed to all these churches. And the person delivering the message is supposed to come out and say, okay, here's, here's what's going on with your church. You know, like, like I mentioned in the last class that, that Jesus is speaking as the inspector general of the troops. And here's where you're good, and here's where you're not so good. And only two of them didn't get, uh, didn't get criticized. But... but um, one of them, just a couple of them, weren't doing too well. <laughs> and so it's interesting to read these things because you can, go, you can kind of try to internalize them, even though it's coming out of that time and that era, and you can go, wow, how are we doing? Are we showing that kind of charity? Are we exuberant about the Lord like these guys? I mean, for us to be exuberant about the Lord, you think, how hard is that? It, it's even hard for us to get out and, and speak stuff to people that you say, no, we'll reject it. I mean, I, I experienced this one on a, on a personal level. And, um, and then people are maybe kind of, uh, what to say to them. But when you think about people coming out of an era where your life was on the line doing that, you know, it was beyond talking to people at the dinner table. It was, you would be murdered and brutally for it. So it's, it's neat to get an insight into letters that would be written to encourage and to guide and instruct and help those people out of that time that are going through that kind of thing. But it's good for us to have in our heart, you know, to read a letter like that so that when we, we face tough things, we're ready to go. I mean, talk about lessons. Uh, yeah, Virginia? That would be an interesting one to write. Well, see, now that we're down to just two days' worth of questions, we have all this spare time now, right? <laughs> So why don't, you know, it might be fun to wait till the end after we've gone through the whole, the whole chapter and for our kind of like grand finale, we can write our own. And maybe, you know, who knows, maybe that night you'll go home and have some really wild <laughs> symbolic <laughs> dream and come back to class. Like, hey, here's my letter. <laughs> it could be fun, you know. Maybe they'll find it in our tombs one day a thousand years later and go, Wow, look at this Sylvia. Look what she wrote to the church of... <laughs> Isn't that funny? Uh, did you have a question? I just wanted to say, I think the two days was wonderful because it's so restful. Yeah. 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 It does. Yeah. There's a lot of... But there's a lot, and there's a lot to present, and I feel like doing half of the whole thing is just like... It just wears everybody out, you know. It's too much information. This is just jam-packed names and dates, especially just so you know. When when we do the first chapters, they're always the toughest ones to get through because they have all that history stuff and the the theories and the the dates and the people and the name, you know. And so, just bear through the first chapters. Don't think that the whole book is going to be that dry, you know, because then we get into what it's all about. And that's the interesting stuff. Mary Berry. Would you want to? <laughs> you know, it's just like the fact that I'm up here do, presenting this. Wait till, wait till you get through this. It's like you'd read this and go, I don't want to be up there teaching that. <laughs> I don't want to. You know, it, it just, it, it's a tough book. And then I think people think, like all these different cults, they've taken pieces of it. Yes. And they've got their own, like you say, their own assessment. Yep. And that's very much the risk. That's the risk of even teaching a class like this, you know, because somebody could take something out of context, something I say here, something in the book, and go off and say, well, I learned that in the class. So, you know, I look at it this way. The Lord called me to do the two darn hardest, the Hebrews and 
apocalypse. So the, I talk about wants to start off with. You know, I figure if I get through these alive, you know, we're, we're home free. Yeah. Because <laughs> these are really, these are the most controversial. Exactly. So, you know, I guess he's kind of, if I'm going to get excommunicated, it's going to happen early in the game, not after I've done this for 10 years, right? <laughs> so pray for me that I get through this in one piece. And uh, the, I'm just counting on the Holy Spirit to guide everything I, I say to, to all of you here. So. Yes. Yes, and it, was, it is, says right in it that it is meant to be heard. Somebody is supposed to get up and read it to people, to you. We are doing what Scripture tells us by listening to this. And by not doing it, we're not doing what Scripture tells us. So that tells you something right there. So there's some reason God wants us to hear this. And, um, you know, I look at it this way because it speaks to the soul. And this is just my opinion, okay? I'm not getting this out of here yet. Or, but because it speaks to the spirit, it doesn't speak to logic or your human senses. I believe that it probably puts some kind of a message in your subconscious, your soul, a part of you that you probably aren't even aware is being spoken to, that it's making a point that when you need this information, when you need things out of here, you're going to be able to retrieve that because your soul has been exposed to it. And I don't know what you think about that, but that's, I, I, I believe in things like that. I, I believe that sometimes God has to get past the filters of our human logic and reason to get through to our spirits because we are, we are people that so depend on our being in control. You know, nothing's going to get into my head throughout my self filter. You know, this gets in, this doesn't. But what happens in your sleep? If you're praying to the Lord and say, Lord, please give me wisdom. Help me, help me to do your will and to follow your word and to understand what it is you're telling me in this scripture. And it's so important you do that that I believe sometimes maybe while you're sleeping, things are just put into your head. Because I wake up sometimes from the most bizarre and unbelievable dreams that I, I can't believe it. I, I write them down. I'm like, oh my gosh, someday somebody's going to read all this. It's just, you know? I go, I don't know what's going on in there, but that's got to be God. I couldn't come up with this stuff, you know? And, and, and it does. And then all of a sudden, you'll be doing something and you'll never expect it, and that dream will come to you. And you totally forgot about it. You're going, you know, I go, wow, I know exactly what to do. I, so how did I know that? It's really weird. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. What, what the apocalypse is happening right now. Yep. Oh, yeah. That, that right. Well, you got to see, too, being that all of history of mankind, and then Jesus comes and Jesus dies for us. Monumental moment. The new Adam, right? We now have access to heaven. We now can become close to, we can become one with God. We have now become physical temples of the Lord. Okay? Huge, huge thing in human history. So there's no doubt we're in a new era. Okay? And these things are spoken by the Lord, the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. So he's speaking to our spirit somehow. And... Um, it's good that we're hearing it. However it gets into you, where, whatever it does when it's in there, you know, this is where we should be and this is what we should be hearing. And God bless you all for coming and, and, and doing what God's will is, which is to come to fellowship, to be together, to hear and study and to love his word. And that's what you're all doing. And, you know, good, good thing, you guys. God bless you all. <laughs> Fighting with the things you know you do You tell yourselves you're having fun This life is all about you Can't you see you're missing it The damage that you do